Hey, Mike Hobbs here. I wanted to shoot this quick video just to show you uh, an easy, easy trick to, to really be organized with your domain names because I've actually, you know, met business partners and people on the team, you know, they're trying to write down all their domains inside their, like a Word doc or an Excel sheet or something. And then, you know, someone asks them, hey, what's your, what's your GVO link or what's your 124 capture page or you know whatever business you're promoting whatever link they're asking for Aweber some affiliate products that you may be a part of or whatnot they just ask you these questions and you have to go searching for this stuff well it's really easy for me to know my link so when someone says you know hey what's your tweet adder link or whatever or hey what's this link or what's that link I know right off the top of my head exactly what the link is because I'm going to show you how to use one domain name and then just use subdomains to do the same thing. Now I use GoDaddy uh, for my my provider, my hosting, not hosting, uh, just for my domain names, okay? You know, we use GBO for the hosting. But I use GoDaddy for just buying my domain names. I know there's other ones out there, Namecheap, you know, there's a whole bunch of them out there. Uh, but it's all the same concept. You're looking to build subdomains and regular domains. So let me show you how to do that real quick. First, you log into the account, and you just got to find where you where you manage domains. And in in here, it's actually under my account. So if you click on my account, it's going to pull up a whole bunch of stuff here. And right here under domains, just click launch. Okay and then it pulls it up and then you're going to have a list of all the different domains that you're a part of uh, i'm going to use a different domain than i normally do but the one that i uh, let's just go pick one real quick uh, let me just use the hobbs wealth one okay so you click on the domain you bought or whatever one that you're in and then you're gonna scroll down okay so uh, well number one if you want to forward this let's say to a capture page hobswealth.com to a capture page you would do that right here under forwarding and you'll just click manage and you'll put your capture page URL and it's as simple as just clicking manage putting where you want it to go so if this is your capture page URL you would put that right there and then you would start sending people to hobswealth.com instead of the page that you put here okay that's kind of the best way to explain it uh, if they tell you that you're not allowed to use masking then do not check masking okay but if you're allowed to do masking then you can this is where you would do forward and masking okay but most of the time just use forward only on affiliate products because you don't want to risk the chance of losing your commissions by masking the domain name okay so just do forward only for now unless they specify that you can mask then of course do masking but make sure you they specify that uh, if they just tell you to forward do only forward okay and you click OK and that's how simple that is uh, but here's the magic right here okay if you scroll down a little bit, you're going to notice right here it says forward subdomains. This is where you want to be at. Uh, 181 available. That's more than you'll ever need. Uh, and you'll notice that I have some already. Aweber and Sieg. Uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. Blog. Okay, there's a whole bunch of subdomains I've already created, but let me show you real quick what I would do. You just have to click on this little manage button, okay? And uh, then you just click add subdomain. That's it. And then here's what you do. If let's say you're doing this for your 124 campaigns or whatnot, and you have a, a capture page or you have a info page. So let's say a page that gives them all the information they need to know. It's not a capture page, but it gives them all the information they need to know to make a decision or something. You can name one called info. Okay, and then you just put the name right there. So what you would do is you would grab the URL. So for example, this page right here gives people all the information they need to know about my primary company. Okay, 
So I'll grab this big long URL so you'll notice that I don't want to send people to this because it's hard to remember. You have to think, okay, what was the URL? MarketingSurvivalSkills.net landing page 3.php question mark user equals my cobs. I mean, it's a big mouthful to tell a prospect, hey, go to this website. So what we do is we create subdomains. So I'll create one called info dot and I'll go back over to my account here info.obswealth.com that's a lot, a lot easier to remember uh, and then I'll put that big long URL right there oh, that's the wrong URL but, but you guys get the point okay so you grab your big long URL and you'll put that right here okay and that's what you do and you click OK and now from here on out you only have to remember info and then your domain name and that's what you send them to. Basically what a subdomain does is it replaces www. So www is a subdomain, just so you know. www is a subdomain. You delete www and you put info instead. So that's what a subdomain is. And you can do this on limited times, okay? Or 181 times. And then let's say you have a webinar you want to send people to. So this one is a different page right here. This is a webinar. It's just a, this one video webinar recording. Uh, and look at this big, huge, long URL. I don't want to have to remember this big, long URL for a webinar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that URL. I'm going to go here and I'm going to name the subdomain webinar dot your domain name dot com. And then you're going to put that right there and you're gonna click OK and that's gonna forward it so you only have to remember in your mind okay I wanna send people to a webinar so webinar dot my domain dot com that's easy to remember okay now let's say you have GVO or some other affiliate product you could do the same thing uh, so for example this is host and profits this is our autoresponder that we use and if you need to give this link to someone it's, is it easier to remember hostandprofit.com or just your regular domain? You, you can just type in GVO or you can type HTP. Whatever makes you remember it the best, you would put that right here. So if you want to do HTP, you go HTP dot your domain name dot com and you put the link right here. Click OK. Or if you just want to put GVO just to make it easy on yourself to remember it in your mind, uh, gvo.yourdomain.com so do this for all of your um, capture pages all of your you know info pages webinar recording pages affiliate products literally you can have one domain and have a link for everything you're in and just name the subdomain what it is that's the easiest way to remember so if it's tweet adder that you're trying to sell you just name the subdomain tweet adder. I mean, that's easy to remember. If it's GVO, you name it GVO. If it's if it's 124, you name it 124. If it's Empower Network, you name it EN or Empower Network. Whatever you decide to do, you create your subdomain named after that, and you put the link that it goes to here, so then in your mind, you can just remember it. So someone comes to you, hey, what's your push button email or uh, you know, your push button email or domain name? And you just go, oh, that's easy. It's it's P uh, B E. So push button email or maybe I did abbreviations. PBE dot Oswald.com. Hey, what's your Aweber link? Aweber dot see it's it's just in your mind, you'll know what to say if someone asks you for your links. So just make a list of everything that you're in, all the different URLs and stuff that you have, and then create a bunch of subdomains for it, and that'll keep you very, very organized. I use this all the time. It looks way more professional inside your emails for one, or when you're sending things out, instead of these big, huge, long links, it's an actual domain name with your domain. Just gotta remember, when you're using this, you need to take off www because www technically is a subdomain so if you leave it there it will not work you have to get rid of that and replace it 
with one of these uh, names that you create. And then uh, the best way to make it clickable is to make sure you still have the HTTP in front of it. Uh, so when you're giving that out to people, so you go HTTP colon slash slash your subdomain dot domain dot com. That's how it's supposed to look. That's how easy this is. Go out there, get organized, get this done. And if you like the video, comment below. Let me know if this helped. Anyway, have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next video.